Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wald, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. I try my best. <laughs> now, Dr. Wald, you hold several degrees and certifications, including board certification in nutrition. Right. And we have some questions that people have sent us through on today's topic of multiple sclerosis. Uh, we have a lot of people in our office who are dealing with MS and who are seeing some amazing results. Uh, we have one person in particular, Sean, who is asking about his progressive MS. Okay. He says, I've been dealing with MS for several years mm -hmm. and now I'm getting worse. I have difficulty walking, I'm tired all the time, and my memory is becoming a really big problem. I've been taking the medications that my neurologist recommended, but what else can I do that is going to be able to really help me out? Right. Well, first of all, Sean, I'm sorry that you're having to go through this. Let's first start with just a quick definition of what MS actually is. So MS, or multiple sclerosis, is an autoimmune disease where, for whatever reason, your immune system, Sean, thinks that certain parts of your nervous system are foreign, but namely the white matter of your nervous system, which is the, the covering around certain aspects of the, of the, of the brain. And uh, what happens in MS is there are uh, usually plaques that form. These are lesions that you can see on imaging, such as an MRI, and they'll look like little white spots. And depending on where these white spots are on the brain, um, different parts of the brain control different uh, functions in the body. So if you have plaques, let's say, on this side of your brain or in the front, frontal lobe, for example, uh, different symptoms will show up. And what's interesting about MS is that you know people with plaques, some, some patients that have been diagnosed have no plaques, others have lots of plaques, and they may or may not form and be associated with new symptoms. So having said that, our diagnose, uh, diagnostic uh, um, imaging tests and things of that nature, they don't really help much in terms of uh, the natural or the traditional uh, therapies for MS. We want to go based on symptoms. So, Sean, you're someone who you're tired all the time, and also he's got some, some memory issues as well. Memory. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the the traditional multiple sclerosis medications they're not but they're not geared for those symptoms. They're meant to try to slow the course of the disease down over time. And there's sort of iffy information on certain MS meds working better than others. But overall, I think we see that we're not seeing a bunch of happy campers in terms of our MS patients and you know uh, positive benefits from most of these uh, these medications. But that does not mean that others might not uh, you know do well with them. But Having said that, Sean, let's talk about uh, the, the walking along with the memory and the energy because there are certain nutritional things that have to do with all of those symptoms. And in mass, the body simply isn't healing as well as it's degenerating, so we, we need some healing going on. And neurologists are obviously well-intentioned, but they don't have any nutritional training, so that's very limited and confusing, as you know, Cassie, mm -hmm. because people will call you up and say, well, how is that that Dr. Wald knows about these nutritional things and supplements and herbs, and my neurologist never mentioned this to me, and you know, all we can sort of say is, I don't know. It's just a matter of interest. Nutrition is a completely other area of health care. You know, again, as you mentioned, I have board certifications in it, so it's not something you can pick up in a, in a weekend seminar. So, you know, having said that, number one, there are definitely certain uh, ways dietarily to slow the course of MS. So there was a, a Dr. Roy Swank, a neurologist who had one of the longest MS studies and diet ever done, and he showed a far slower course of MS. Um, when you compare people to even medications. So, you know, you expect a certain amount of, uh, you know, debilitating downward uh, spiral in, in MS over the course of one's lifetime. But if you follow the Dr. Roy Swank sort of food plan, which basically is a plant-based diet, low on the acid ash level, but there are several things that Dr. Um, Swank mentions in his, in his books uh, and in and his research that I think need to be adjusted for the person. So, for example, uh, he talks about the consumption of meat, meat products being allowed to a certain extent and other dietary factors. But with blood work and with careful questionnaires and careful interviews with patients, we find that there are special dietary considerations. Let me give you a key one. So, in MS, Dr. Swank never mentioned anything about gluten. We know today that gluten, which is obviously a, 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 a compound in grains, can, can trigger all sorts of immune conditions. So whether it's the cause of MS or an aggravator, I personally think it needs to be eliminated from the diet entirely. But one place to start is with Dr. Roy Swank's book. How I, as a blood detective, would you know uh, manage you, Sean, as an individual is, uh, we would look at what your chemistry says that you need. So you might be protein deficient, and we need proteins to make neurotransmitters in the brain, which help with um, you know messages getting from one nerve to the next. So we need that for movement, we need that for energy, 
and we need those neurotransmitters for mood. So just that one nutritional factor could manage a lot of, of Sean's health issues. And this can all come out through the blood detective work that you do. Right, exactly, which, uh, you know, look, no one, you haven't asked me yet, but I, I was nicknamed the blood detective by a grateful patient, actually, whose wife had MS, and they said, wow, you know, how did you figure that out? We saw these other well-meaning doctors, and it's been years with, of issues. And um, they were grateful that I was able to discover that, and we gave them, uh, you know, Sean the appropriate treatment. And they said, you're kind of like a blood detective. So, you know, the name's stuck, and I, and I sort of wear that as a badge of honor to just really just keep looking deep. Just throwing MS medications at a person, I think, is, um, well, may maybe the right thing to do. That depends on how you think about things, but it is not complete. So in terms of more specifics on the diet, I mentioned gluten, uh, and uh, throughout all these video series, there are certain fundamentals that I mentioned that are important for everyone for any purpose, uh, just to improve health and, and offset a risk of disease. And that would include um, eliminating refined and processed carbohydrates, eating more naturally, uh, eating more fruits and vegetables, four to six or even seven servings a day, which is sort of tough to do, mm -hmm. but that's what the dietary guidelines show is the, is, is the best thing. Uh, we use concentrated dehydrated fruit and vegetable products to help make up for you know, a diet that may not be as high uh, in fruits and vegetables as we'd like. Basically, Sean, we know that the typical American diet, which is called the SAD diet, standard American diet, is associated with lots of chronic degenerative diseases and an ever-increasing incidence of not just MS, but many autoimmune diseases. So we want to eat something other than the standard American diet, which would be more towards the vegetarian type of a diet and eating organically whenever we can. And that's not going to be 100%, Sean. You know, we, you know, we go out to restaurants and we're not always in situations where we can you know, watch and keep the herbicides, pesticides, and fungus out of our foods, but these are neurotoxic, many of these chemicals, and uh, although not definitively proven to cause MS, my common sense tells me if you're already affected and you're not feeling well, we need to start looking at these things. So Sean, we need to examine the environment, looking for toxins and other influences. Uh, cold and heat also affect MS symptoms, um, not getting too hot, keeping yourself cool most of the time. And then uh, through laboratory blood detective work, we would look for different infections that might have triggered MS that might be causing a lot of Sean's persistent symptoms now and, and getting rid of those, uh, those infections, whether it's through natural means and or traditional you know, medical means. That, again, depends on the person, what, what Sean, sort of what his mindset is, because some people want to do things entirely naturally. Others, it's sort of an integrated approach, mm -hmm. and then others, it's just traditional medical. But Sean's already been there and done that. It's just not enough. Um, again, in terms of supplementation, there are literally dozens and dozens of studies that show that a variety of nutrients can slow the course of MS down and also improve the quality of life of sufferers. So, Sean, with these issues, this is, these are quality of life issues for you. So we want to think about, not just rattle off a couple of the key nutrients that you can look uh, on your own, or again, read the many articles that we have uh, on our website at uh, www.intmedny.com on MS, including my story about my personal uh, issues with MS called Mile 18. If you search our blog, you'll see that there. But uh, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, ginkgo biloba, uh, vitamin D, uh, multivitamin, which uh, with extra amounts of, of methylated B12 and methylated folic acid, those are special types of those B vitamins that help build up the myelin. Uh, and again, it really comes down to individual needs. So we need to look at the lab work, we need to look at questionnaires, and uh, the basics of the diet as we spoke about Sean. So I hope that information was somewhat helpful to you. And again, there's much more on the website about that. Now you did mention the dehydrated powdered nutrients, what are right. these? So, you know, uh, a New York Times article just a few weeks prior to this interview uh, very well determined that we have farmed out the nutrition in our foods. Mm -hmm. They actually compared, Sean, foods that you buy in supermarkets and the wild counterparts, let's say of like blueberries or strawberries, for example, and they found that the farmed out foods, or I should say the healthy wild counterparts have between five and thousands of times higher levels of nutrition. So we are not what we eat anymore. We cannot eat a, an excellent diet because even the most w well laid out plans in terms of diet, we're eating empty foods. So you bring up this whole issue of these dehydrated powdered products. If we could put on this table a bunch of fruits and vegetables and remove all the water, we'd have a dehydrated powder. So mm -hmm. what I've done is put that in a container and when you take a few scoops of that per day, you're getting the equivalent of many, many different pieces of fruits and vegetables all dehydrated out. So we increase the 
nutritional concentrations of all these phyto or plant elements that are very helpful for not just multiple sclerosis but many other conditions. Uh, resveratrol and anything from berries, by the way, you'll find in concentrated fruits and vegetables that are anti-inflammatory. They're immune modulators, meaning if your immune system is too hyperactive, which it is in MS, it comes down. If it's too low, it comes up. So you can't go wrong with foods, except today we can't only rely on foods, and, and one of our other uh, presentations is all about you know vitamins and minerals, and we'll speak about this more then. Okay. But as you know, we're, we're big fans of using the dehydrated food products Absolutely. for people particularly who it's just hard to get those things in. So thanks, Sean.